Mila vacuum. Today, each new design is born in a state-of-the-art lab called The Cave. It's a 3D virtual reality world that allows engineers and designers to crawl inside their own product designs to make sure they're getting it right. Once they're happy with the design, the product enters the real world. All the assembly happens here at their plant in Bielefeld, Germany. Miele has an ergonomically designed assembly line where all the materials are at a convenient height for workers. It's also unusual for another reason. Every single vacuum has a guardian of sorts who follows its production from start to finish. One worker assembles the whole vacuum cleaner from the power head from the very beginning to the casing top, to the end of the assembly. And that means that he's responsible for the whole product from the beginning to the end. The workers like this process because they have less monotony and uh, they have the possibility of a bigger work content. First, the power head is assembled. Fans and electrical components are placed inside, followed by the powerful Vortex motor, one of two motors in the S7 that give it its powerful suction. It works with nine blades and our Miele engineers added nine additional supporting blades, which is really intelligent. And these supporting blades transform the air noise up to frequencies out of the human hearing range. That means the vacuum's quiet too. Here, the high performance filter cartridge goes in. We use a 12-stage uh, filtration system. We have a nine-layer dust bag, and then we have a motor filter, and afterwards we have a HEPA filter. And that means that the air which leaves the vacuum cleaner is cleaner than the ambient air you are breathing at the moment. Miele has what's called intelligent production, where the tools apply the exact pressure required. These screwdrivers know exactly how they have to tighten a screw. When all the parts are installed, a happy union takes place. The power brush and the body are joined. The fixture makes quite sure that the angle of the assembly is precisely uh, what our engineers told us. It takes about seven minutes to assemble each vacuum. And when it's done, it's handed straight to a tester. The brushes and motors are run on a tile floor and on a low pile carpet for about 600 hours. Here, vacuums are dropped 10,000 times. They also go through a swiveling nightmare, maneuvering corners for 50 minutes straight or three million cycles. Then they're raised and lowered by the handles 20,000 times to simulate 20 years of wear and tear and you thought your vacuum got a workout. Back on the factory floor, the assembled vacuum cleaners are sent to packaging, where machines do all the heavy lifting. And after the packaging station, we put it uh, on a transport belt to the palletizing station, and then we have a palletizing robot, which makes the pallet ready for dispatch. Once dispatched, these brand new S7s can start their relentless hunt for dust bunnies everywhere. And they do it much better than their predecessors ever did. I think the first real vacuum cleaners did more rearrange the dust from the carpet to somewhere else, but not keep it in the bag like we do it today. Up next, the tableware with a palette that colors your world. The name Fiesta means party, so the name works. If ever there was a tableware that was all about celebrating, this is it. The colors are, are, are fun and bright, and I think that leads up to, to making you, giving you that kind of a happy feeling. Fiesta ware is something that everybody can like. It has a shape from a, a dinner plate to a salad to the ovals and everything else in between. It's easily the most widely collected dinnerware in the United States today. 
Ever since it was introduced by the Homer Laughlin China Company in the 1930s, Fiesta Ware has attracted an almost cult following. I know people who put additions on their homes to house their Fiesta collection. Part of its appeal is that it's mix and match tableware. By one color or by many, the palette is designed so that none of the colors clash. If we have a color and it doesn't look that great when it's all blended with the other ones, then it's not going to be a good mix and match color. So besides being a color on their own, they also have to blend well with the others. They introduce a new color and retire one every year. Scarlet is their all-time bestseller. And what's coming next is a tightly guarded secret at Fiesta Wear. We're not trying to, to be cloak and dagger about that, but we do have to very seriously keep that under wraps because uh, a lot of people follow the color trends that Fiesta is setting. Inspiration for their color selection comes from a variety of sources. Take their latest, paprika. That was a color that was popular on automobiles a few years ago when we had some in the parking lot and we went out there with a spectrophotometer and actually read the color off of the hood of a pickup truck and a car to get started. Fiesta Ware is also famous for those concentric rings found on every piece from plates to mugs to creamers. The shape of Fiesta was Art Deco and at that time was the latest thing. And over the, over the years, that Fiesta shape has never gone out of style. It's just as modern today as it was 60, 70 years ago. That's why it's endured. And it has endured, still in the same location as it was at the turn of the last century. This region on the banks of the Ohio River was once a gold mine of pottery production. Originally, they came here because of the, the natural clay deposits and also because of the river. They needed the transportation. It was uh, the mecca of the, the uh, pottery industry in the United States, uh, like Stoke is in, in Great Britain. In the 1930s, the Homer Laughlin China Company recruited a British potter named Frederick Reed. That would turn out to be a very wise decision. It was Reed who, in the dirty 30s, thought of creating a tableware that would brighten American spirits. People needed that. They needed something that would give them a moment's joy, you know, that wasn't going to break the bank for them to do it. The Fiesta Ware design was downright modern. At that time, and for 30, 40 years before that, dinnerware was floral decorations. And I think well, people were getting a little tired of that, and that's why uh, the solid colors appealed to people. And what colors? The original five colors were uh, ivory, green, blue, yellow, and red. The depression ended, but Fiesta Ware's popularity kept growing, their colors changing with the times. Today, people still can't get enough of it, and their factory in Newell, West Virginia, is a throwback to another era. It is a journey in time, walking through the 30-some acres under roof that we have here. It all begins with raw materials, like clay. We have clay, felspar, silica, alumina, and we weigh those individual components out, and then we pneumatically transfer them to a large blunger, which has water in it, and these materials are added, and we mix it and turn it into slip or slurry, and it's the consistency of uh, half and half or heavy cream. That slurry is transferred to various tanks in the factory. The next step takes place here, the filter press, where water is removed from the slurry. It is definitely low tech, where good old-fashioned muscle cranks the filter to extract just the right amount of moisture. We dewater it and produce filter cake. Now this filter cake has about 18% moisture in it. The right amount of moisture in the clay is crucial to making this tableware. The cakes are then cut into what are called round pugs, just the right size for a plate or bowl. So it's taken like a, like a slice of bologna and cutting it up into the slice size that we need to go on the jigger machine. The jigger machine is a sight to behold and is a throwback to a production technique that is decades old. But as the saying goes, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. When we come back, Fiesta Ware puts on its party dress.
Just Aware is a throwback to Art Deco design of the 1930s, but retro is in, and Fiesta Wear is more popular than ever. As soon as I say the name Fiesta, I, I do get a lot of stories. Um, oh, my mother had that, or my grandmother had that, or my sister just got that for her wedding, or what did you do with this, or what's the next color gonna be, or those kind of things. So a lot of people do relate to that, and it's, it's kind of fun being the designer that's associated with that name. It's the product that everybody knows, and they travel here. I, I've talked to people that make a pilgrimage here. They plan their summer vacations to come and visit our factory. The bold colors of Fiesta Wear are its signature, but its shapes are iconic too. And start with this, the pug, a fat slice of soft clay that's ready to be shaped into just the right bowl or plate. It heads to the jigger, a massive yet oh so delicate machine that with this bizarre looking tool, swirls the pug into the shape of a bowl in seconds. What's called hollow wear, like mugs and pitchers, are made through a different method, casting. We have a plaster mold that has a shape of the item we're casting. We fill it up with slip and let it sit for 20, 25 minutes, and then we open the molds up and we have the piece of wear. And there's another process for creating unusual asymmetrical shapes, called a ram press. This literally squeezes the pug between two plaster dies, and voila a triangular plate emerges. At this stage, every product is sent to the dryer. The moisture content must be just right before it enters the kiln, just one to three percent. Otherwise, trouble. The physical water turns into steam and it violently does that and it violently explodes. So if only one or two pieces were wet, it explodes everywhere and ruins the whole car or multiple cars. It's so violent of an explosion. Next, it's on to glazing. Color is very important at Fiesta Wear, so its application matters. Here, items are periodically tested for evenness in the glazing. They're weighed before glazing and after to make sure that just the right thickness is applied. Then the tableware is ready for the kiln. The temperature, the max temperature is 2200 degrees Fahrenheit, and from cold to cold, which is entrance door to exit door, takes around 24 hours. The Fiesta Wear emerges ready for use but not before the lab has checked it for its legendary durability and chip resistance. This old school technique still works. Keep applying pressure until it cracks. It doesn't. Various tests make sure Fiesta Wear can stand by its guarantee. Five years of chip-free existence. Throw that in your dishwasher. It's finally packed by hand, boxed and ready for shipping. 80 years after the first box left this factory, they're still going strong. Longevity is a hallmark of great design. By that definition, Fiesta Wear is still the life of the party. Up next, into the swing of things, making a hammer a hit. You might think a hammer is just a hammer, but when it comes to design, the Steel Eagle nails it. It's made by one of the oldest hammer companies in the world, Vaughn and Bushnell. With 140 years of expertise behind it, the Steel Eagle is a hit, with handymen and professional builders alike. We design our hammers for the end user. Being in business as long as we have has uh, proven that we're doing it right. It can be as pretty as you want and look good, but if it doesn't function right, you know, it's useless. It has to feel good, and the balance is real key. It's all in the swing. That may sound simple, but it's anything but. Vaughn and Bushnell uses sophisticated software to